Uh, good morning, everybody. Emily here from the Improvement Service, and today I'm joined by my colleague Johanna. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining today's webinar. We've got Bob Miller from Argyle and Butte Council, and Bob's going to talk about his project on digitally engaging people in communities. Uh, just before I pass it over to Bob, um, if you would like to ask any questions, then please feel free to do so in the grey box on your screen, and Johanna and I will pick them up at the end. Um, so, Bob, over to you. Thank you. Okay, morning everybody. Um, thank you for coming along today. Uh, I promise I'm not going to preach at you how you should do digital or how you should do engagement or anything. We just thought it might be useful for um, you to hear how a uh, relatively small and um, but very large in terms of uh, area council um, has doing customer engagement uh, using all the digital tools it can possibly muster within its very meager budget. Uh, Argyll and Butte Council, uh, as you're pr probably aware, um, is uh, a, a huge expanse on the west coast. Uh, only Highland Council are larger in terms of area. Now, I'm talking to you today uh, from uh, the bottom end of that spur of land, which is the Mull of Kintyre down in Campbelltown. Excuse me. Uh, and um, uh, I think that really shows that the reason that we are so keen about digital engagement is that um, we need to try very, very hard to reach people across a huge area, uh, including 23 um, inhabited islands. So digital engagement, both on a personal level for individual customers, but also on a, a community-based level, is uh, particularly challenging. I think um, the other thing to point out in terms of challenges is um, it's also difficult for us to coordinate our uh, employees in order to meet the needs of our customers in terms of engaging with them to deliver services and engaging with them to uh, seek their input uh, to how we should deliver those services and to what services we should be delivering uh, in these increasing days of uh, budget hardship. Um, that has obviously become a hot topic across all of our councils. So as I say, I don't intend to um, really preach to you about that, but just to show you how we've gone about it. Now, we have within our Garland Butte always been, um, and, and, and certainly since I joined in uh, 2009, great advocates of taking a digital approach. Um, and we set up a virtual contact center um, in Campbelltown, but what we have is dispersed um, people in our customer service points who are all linked to the same uh, system, which was um, a Lagan and a McFarland system originally and has recently changed. So we've always been uh, advocates of using uh, all the um, uh, resources at our disposal by linking them in a digital way. We also um, have been very aware that um, uh, you know a significant part of our customer, um, our demographic in our Gallen Butte is elderly, uh, and so we have to try very, very hard to um, reach the digitally disenfranchised, but also in ways that is, is digital but that they can use. And so we um, uh, took on voice automated services for payments, switchboard, service disruptions, um, and as I'll show you later on, voice forms um, since 2010 using the net call system. Uh, our web, of course, is the absolute fulcrum of our digital uh, efforts. And although we only have a very small web team, um, the web team is just three people, um, we have uh, um, made great efforts to make sure that we have a very good website that is used by a lot of people. Uh, and actually, just in the very last quarter, it was the first time we ever um, exceeded uh, a million unique visits uh, within a quarter to our, our website, which when you remember from the population statistics I just showed you, we will have a population of 90,000. Uh, and so we're quite proud of the fact that we've kept either three or four star Socketim uh, ranking for the for, for, since 2011, really. Um, we also, uh, and it comes back to that point I was telling about joining up employees in order to make sure that we can engage effectively with our customers and communities, uh, where I think the first council in Scotland to introduce a corporate level across all its um, uh, um, digitally enabled employees link SIP unified um, comms, and that has been truly revolutionary in the way we do business, um, deliver training, hold meetings, um, engage with our communities um, using that capability, uh, which we've had since 2012. Of course, um, you know, we, we all know the explosion in social media 
uh, and so we introduced um, uh, social media analytics and monitoring as a core part of our offering to customers uh, and for our managers in um, 2015 and um, we uh, tied that into our new omni-channel um, CRM in 2016 which we'll come on and talk about a little bit later so so we have always been a significant digital uh, advocate and always on the lookout, as I say, within our very meager budgets um, about how we do that. But we wouldn't inflict that upon our um, uh, customers and communities if it wasn't something that uh, there was a significant demand for. Uh, and to ensure that we were heading down the right track, we carried out a huge um, customer service uh, engagement um, about how we do customer service delivery and, and customer engagement in November of 2014. And because councils are slow and decision trees are slow, it took a full year for that, uh, the findings of that to wend its way through all the various committees and to actually get everything signed off for our way ahead. Um, but crucial to it was the fact that, you know, our customers themselves were telling us that they wanted to do digital that they had some concerns that we needed to address um, around about security and uh, multiple registrations and not being able to find things online. Um, but also looking forward, 23% um, uh, of them wanted to use some of the newer digital mediums. Um, uh, and um, uh, of course, our communities in terms of community councils, etc., cetera, um, were, were very keen to make sure that we were trying to engage and inform and consult them um, in doing that. And even as you speak at the moment, uh, if you go onto our website, you'll see the big listen that is going on um, uh, on our website, which is a series of face-to-face um, uh, -face meetings, but also digital engagements across our area to talk about how we do um, local government. And I'm sure you guys are doing something similar uh, because it's coming down from uh, central government. So um, we had the mandate, as it were, um, of our communities and our customers to go down the path that we wanted to um, go on. Uh, and so, uh, a huge driver for that um, was obviously the switch to mobile since really um, the last four or four years or so. Um, mobile has been uh, revolutionary for us uh, and it'll be the same for yourselves. And again, 2017 was the tipping point in terms of traffic uh, for us um, to our uh, digital media and particularly through our various website offerings. Um, so that for the first time, um, mobile exceeded um, desktop. But that, of course, also um, fed a hunger uh, for digital um, across engagement um, uh, media that we hadn't really been using significantly in a, a transactional way. Um, we'd done pumping out of information in a one directional way, um, but we hadn't really done it in a true engagement fashion. Um, and uh, so we've done uh, significant efforts over the last couple of years uh, to, to address that gap um, in our armory, and that includes visual. Um, people think, uh, you know, digitally engaging is all about the, the written word. We actually get so much um, digital engagement through um, uh, uh, Instagram um, because uh, people are motivated by love and share the place that we live in, and uh, also the opposite. They are great safeguards and guardians of the place we live in and are very happy to uh, point out to us, um, you know, uh, uh, visually unsightly um, things, potholes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, on that. So that's a, that's a been a, a massive growth area over the last year in particular on, on the visual side of the Instagram. So we needed to meet all of that. And um, we've done so in uh, uh, a number of ways. And part of the other driver for doing that um, was also the fact that we knew that in order to meet the, the uh, hunger, we would then also address um, different uh, demographics uh, um, within our uh, communities. Um, it was very clear to us that certain people of certain demographics used one digital channel, like the uh, website. Certain people of a different demographic used a different uh, demographic, such as um, uh, Facebook, and that cut across both age and gender. Uh, and we were very keen, as part of our equality um, side of things, to um, make sure, and of course, our you know, um, uh, making sure that we were uh, tackling steadily uh, th those who were digitally disenfranchised by making different offerings to them um, across the piece. Now, with all of that, it gave us a great armory um, to then go to our managers and say, look, we really, really need to change our digital culture. 
um, particularly about how we engage with um, uh, uh, our individual customers and our communities. And moving from that really um, kind of uh, 2000s style of um, uh, thing to the 2010 and onwards style of, of, of doing that. Um, and a big part of that was um, about moving from being reactive to being proactive in engaging with our uh, customers. Um, and a lot of that actually um, was to our benefit um, because one of the things we um, were very keen to tackle from an efficiency point of view was um, avoidable contacts. Uh, and, uh, you know, we were finding that particularly for certain areas of our business, we had anything up to 20% of um, uh, the contacts coming in were uh, avoidable uh, by providing better information by building our services in a way that meet, met people's needs better rather than uh, in a way that we wanted them to meet the needs that suited our organization. Um, uh, and in fact, I've got a little, um, if I can just uh, master this um, technology, let me just show the taskbar and I will go to, uh, let me see this one here. Now you might not be able to see this um, uh, terribly clearly, but the key point on this um, graph I'm showing you is this bottom corner here. And this is our overall um, avoidable contacts uh, by service. Now, we, as part of our digital CRM, um, classify every single um, uh, request for a service that comes in. And we had over 200,000 of them through our CRM uh, last year. And 4.3% of them were as a result of uh, avoidable contacts. And a significant part of that was down to um, information and engagement. Um, so it was incumbent upon us to make sure that we were being proactive rather than reactive as a driver for engagement that we could sell to our, our managers rather than saying this is just a good thing to do because that's what we should be doing because our customers want it. It made great um, business sense from an efficiency point of view. So the other element was um, uh, about making sure that we are doing personalized services in order to engage better with individuals. And I'll come on to that um, just shortly. Um, and a big part of that was um, our integration to the um, uh, My Account um, side of things, the national My Account, um, uh, integrating our CRM and a, a number of other elements to it. And then um, finally, of course, um, being intelligence and analytics led, and that was particularly true of um, social media media of course um, which gave us a whole battery of um, new uh, analytical capabilities and so essentially what we found is that this pie chart that you can see here at the bottom left um, that would have been very much a pac-man type pie chart um, when i joined in 2010 in as much as well over 70 percent of of our um, web uh, uh, hits would have been information informational rather than transactional but you can see that the 53 percent that is really just informational now that that is gradually being driven back um, over time and a significant part of um, our uh, uh, digital traffic is now about um, transactional and engagement type um, elements rather than just informational so uh, once we'd talked to our uh, managers about um, uh, changing our culture, we then turned our mind to um, replacing our engagement platforms, uh, the technology uh, that underpinned them. And as I mentioned, we were lagging in McFarlane as our core too, but we weren't just that. We had a whole host, a mosaic of different systems that we concreted over time to meet different needs. Um, everything from queue busters on callbacks to um, how we went about um, uh, doing mystery shopping to try and get some satisfaction feedback through to um, uh, apps through for where I am, etc. And when we actually costed up the annual cost of the support of those, it came to us, which is a very large figure. I know for some larger councils, this is peanuts, but for our Garland Butte um, Council and for my budget in particular, £92,000 a year in uh, maintenance cost was horrendous. Plus, of course, it meant that when any one end of these broke, um, it was increasingly difficult to find out where it had broken in the chain of all the systems that we'd knitted together, and we were increasingly unresilient. And so we found quite a lot often we weren't able to engage because the system was down. Uh, and when you add that to um, issues of geography, uh, you know, with networks and uh, the Scottish wide area network crashing and things like that, it meant that we were um, having a lot of downtime. So. What we wanted was uh, to replace that mosaic of systems with a single end-to-end -end engagement platform that was omni-channel. And the key to this also was 
you know, um, the customer services, uh, as in most councils, had suffered quite a number of staffing cuts. And what we found was we needed to use every single resource to the absolute end of its ability. And the only way that we could do that was to have a, a universal queue concept whereby every single contact, no matter what channel, digital or otherwise, coming through, was routed through a central hub so that we could allocate the right resources, no matter where they were, distributed across our um, uh, terrain. Uh, and that was also key to making sure that those two things, um, resilience and maximizing resources, was key to making sure that we had a, a really good platform going forward for um, customer engagement. But of course, it had a lot of other um, benefits as well. Um, we could um, uh, have much better security. Um, it um, supported our ICT strategy. Um, we were uh, much more agile. We were able to change things because we only had to change them in one place, really, um, rather than you know um, think about how all this stuff might be affected by it. Um, and of course, it was very flexible and scalable, whereas there were constraints on almost all of these other little systems that we had here. The other thing, of course, was um, the kind of uh, the, the nice to haves, but essentials in our point of view, in terms of um, uh, things like being able to um, do automated customer satisfaction. We were doing an inordinate amount of time doing physical satisfaction surveys, physical collations, and then um, not having as much time as we'd like maybe on the analysis side of things. I mentioned about failure demand uh, uh, earlier on. Um, and so we needed um, uh, to, to have a, a system that had that built in and had that outreach capability built in for the proactive element. And some specialist applications with people banging on the door for, so our elected members um, were very keen that they were not forgotten in this engagement and that the democratic side of things in particular, giving them an overview um, of how they could um, uh, see what was going on within their particular communities, but seeing what was going on within their caseloads. And so we built something called the Councillor Casebook. Again, we're very constrained for time here today, but um, let me just show you uh, this. Um, if I go uh, here, um, this is the um, councillor casebook. Uh, this is me uh, on it in tests as, a, as, a, as a, an elected member. Um, and um, uh, essentially, what we wanted to do was make sure that councillors could raise um, issues in a very simple way, check their outstanding issues, search a knowledge base of things that were specific to them, um, and also uh, check what was going on within their um, caseloads, uh, within uh, um, defined periods of time, um, and also what was going on in their um, areas as well. So they could uh, look at their, um, we call them incidents, it's very dramatic, it's just because of the um, system that we do. So the incidents by status, and the status was feedback from customer, they're all sitting there. The incidents by service area, the reported incidents within their area, um, and what they were, but they could then drill down into them and see what they were, missed bins, fly tipping, and compare them compared to all wards. So they could see how their particular area was looking for dog fouling, for example, compared to what was happening across the council if they had particular areas. And this was totally um, flexible and could be could be changed. So um, the democratic deficit of being able to control what their communities and their individuals were saying um, was, um, was very important. So what we um, uh, had to do, of course, as all good councils do, is have a vision that drove all of this. And our digital first vision was essentially that we, we, we would set up services um, that were so good digitally that anyone who wanted to would use them. We would not forget about the people who may be left behind with our assisted digital, and that we would build services um, that would be efficient to help us manage um, the budget challenges we have and move gradually from this mediated being the um, uh, way that we dealt with everybody to um, being self-service um, for communities and individuals as a way that we wanted to um, uh, change that. So that meant a, a, a change in our digital capability. And capability was the key um, to uh, everything because it wasn't just about the system. We had to put in place the wrap that went around that. Uh, and that included um, doing a, a really thorough review of every single one of our services, every single type of transaction within that service using the Scottish navigation list uh, to come up with um, uh, each service's digital capability to identify the things that needed to be addressed quickly and the things that were more structural. 
we needed to to set up a team that could deliver on all of this uh, and we recruited a specific digital development officer uh, in order to help the web team and our people in customer services um, to do that. Um, we um, progressed uh, all of this through a, a dedicated digital first working group that had the power of the um, strategic management team um, behind it um, and we looked outward as well not only through the uh, recent the Scottish Local Government Digital Office but also setting up that um, integration to uh, my account which um, uh, was also key to addressing, do you remember those concerns that customers had about dealing with us digitally um, because of um, concerns about um, uh, A, uh, security, uh, and B, um, elements to do with um, you know having multiply to um, log on and remember lots of passwords and keywords and um, uh, elements like that. Um, and so we took a lot of time and a lot of effort to integrate our new CRM um, to uh, the uh, national My Account service, which we thought would be the gold standard in terms of um, uh, people's perceptions of uh, online security. Uh, and um, uh, we are uh, committed to um, growing that um, going forward uh, as well. And so um, we are uh, in the um, just about to implement a new booking system. Oh, oh, two seconds. I do apologize about that. That's our fire alarm test. Uh, anyway, it's not a fire, so I don't need to leave the building. You'll be glad to know. Anyway, so uh, he here is uh, our My Account, uh, and it has all the usual geolocational stuff, the capability to bookmark your favorite pages and all of that. But um, it is also integrated to the, um, uh, the CRMs so that people can engage with us and see how we're doing in terms of their particular uh, incidents and of course organizations um, will be coming along with the new biz account um, later on um, in the year as well um, we hope so a lot of enablers but that also meant that we were then able to move on the outcomes of that so we had our digital action plan uh, which was owned by the services, not by the digital team. We were just the helpers for that. The services have driven that forward. And that's a whole host of things. You know, it's uh, maximizing e-forms, it's maximizing integrations, it's maximizing um, consultations on service design, and it's maximizing uh, ongoing performance management um, through, uh, you know, input to satisfaction surveys and things like that as well. A whole new load of digital channels. Um, we use um, web chat now, we use voice forms um, for our uh, um, people who don't like to use the computer too much um, uh, but those voice forms are integrated so for example we've got voice forms for direct debit for a falls helpline for um, one-off exercises like for example we in, went to a three weekly bin collection within the council area and offered a second bin but for people who met very specific criteria uh, and we used the voice form for people to be able to um, request that um, and ask them a series of questions and it set up a you know pre-qualification and if they met the pre-qualification the request would go off to the back office for fulfillment etc so all of those extra channels in there um, we also uh, looked at um, our uh, improved in analytics and customer insight and that forms a, a key part now of a report that goes to our chief exec and to the strategic management team on a quarterly basis but also if there's a um, particular issues that are um, uh, trending then um, obviously there's a, uh, an alert service that goes into them um, sorry uh, the um, my account I've talked to you about, the council casebook I've talked to you about, and I will talk to you about, about our transformation. Because although we've set up a digital action plan for the kind of uh, short to medium term, we were looking to the long term as well, and um, we've done a considerable amount work on um, some uh, transformation business cases, OBC's outline business case, um, that I want to talk about a little bit later. So a, a, a lot of enablers, um, not just about systems, but putting in place the um, the wrap that goes all around that. However, you know, there's no getting away from it. You've got to have the system that that um, does what you need, and we wanted this uh, end to end. Uh, an omni-channel system that did everything from request management at the front through to completion and fulfillment um, at the back. We looked at the market in 2016, we couldn't find one that did all of that um, on its own uh, to our satisfaction. 
some were strong in some areas, um, some were weak in others, online capability, reporting, etc. So what we came up with was a hybrid uh, of the um, Netcall Liberty system and the Oracle uh, Service Cloud, it's a cloud-based uh, CRM system that also has a, a huge big um, outreach capability. It also has a huge big um, online capability um, as well. And it was that that we integrated to the um, National My Account. But both of these, um, apart from the core key functions, they also had to have a lot of satellite um, functions in there um, that were really important to um, achieve the, the um, digital first strategy that I've outlined. Now, when I say omni-channel, it's two different systems. So you think to yourself, how is that, that um, omni-channel and how is it fully integrated? We we put a service wrap about around this through um, uh, Softcat and we put in terms and conditions that forced these two companies to integrate to a significant degree with each other so that there was this seamless pass off between um, the customer um, contact, no matter what channel coming in um, and it being um, fulfilled uh, right to the end. And it had a lot of things that saved our agents a lot of time so that they could um, help more customers and help more communities uh, and that um, uh, concept of the universal queue that I mentioned earlier on was fundamental to that so no matter what the channel is um, coming in um, ultimately it goes through the universal queue so that we can we can quantify it manage it report on it and but allocate it to the people who have the skills and who have the channel capability um, to deal with it um, but then uh, every single one of those has a footprint um, and it doesn't matter if, if it's face-to-face -face, um, if it's letters if it's um, you know old-school stuff or whether it's new stuff um, like web chats and um, something that we call um, smart assistant which is uh, something that we've put in front of our contact us form on our website uh, so that people don't even get to um, send a contact us form unless they've been through the smart assistant first in order to see if that can answer their question. Uh, we had nearly 5,000 contact us email forms coming through last year uh, and um, uh, we put contact us in front of them. Um, we've al already, and this is just the version one of the smart assistant, um, headed off 20% of those with people who found what they needed um, uh, on that. So that's, you know, uh, a thousand contacts automatically. Um, uh, done through self-service to the satisfaction of the customer and the good thing about that is that we learn um, from that uh, each time uh, and um, each failure we add uh, a refinement to the uh, database uh, and improve that and that's going to feed into the next generation called virtual assistant that we're going to be implementing from July um, onwards which is an artificial intelligence version of it that does act actually learn itself. We don't need to do the, so much of the, the tuning, it learns itself. So um, uh, all of that feeding through the universal queue and ultimately, of course, what that gave us was a pool of um, willing people. Um, you know, we have to be very careful with GDPR these days, willing people who wanted to be proactively contacted um, about um, issues that may affect them uh, out in their local communities and to also contact organizations and businesses um, as well uh, about that, um, which is really key. Another element that was really key was integrating. Um, integrating in three ways, really. Uh, first of all, to our uh, infrastructure. Uh, so it's integrated to our email, to the Skype that I mentioned earlier on, um, to uh, um, our payment systems, for example. Integrated to our back office. Um, systems, including uh, Care First, including lighting, including roads, um, booking, um, uh, all of our website stuff, obviously, um, through the through web forms, etc. But also, as I mentioned, to national um, uh, systems like the um, My Account. And again, we're very uh, agnostic about how we do integration. Some of these are direct APIs, like our integration to our WDM road systems. Others are through middleware that we bought. Um, such as uh, um, uh, NDL uh, middleware, and other ones are um, uh, through things that we're developing ourselves, um, uh, integrations we're developing ourselves. The ones in red are the ones that we're currently working on, uh, an integration to uh, between our CRM and our new booking system, which will also be into my account, and an integration into our regulatory services um, uh, system, IDOCS. Uh, uh, as well. So integration absolutely key and fundamental to good um, community and customer engagement seamless um, going forward and we've put a lot of effort um, into that uh, which which does pay dividends I have to say. Um, I mean
mentioned about the web forms, um, as part of the um, enablers that I mentioned earlier on, we did a complete review of the 500 plus us web forms, every single one of them, to see whether they could be um, uh, digitized, whether they could be integrated directly into the back office, and whether they should be, um, because quite a number of them are of such low volume, um, you know, knife dealers licenses, petroleum licenses, you know, just strange, weird, wonderful things that we all have to support but which economically is not viable um, to do and so you can see that the blue here is the downloadable forms and they're still the vast majority of our forms are just downloadable and we don't think we will ever reach a majority that aren't downloadable um, for the simple reason that particularly for a small council like us it's just not economically viable to do the penny number forms which make up the vast majority however the rest of them um, uh, are doable, and we reckon we can probably add another 100 to this over the over the next year uh, or next years. Um, uh, some of which are um, are Oracle related forms. Um, we've got 37, so actually more, more than that now. That was at September 2017, as you can see. Um, some of which are our website, which our website runs on Drupal, which is uh, um, an open source free website content management system, uh, and we put all of the money we saved on going um, open source into um, other goodies like um, uh, improved search engines and, and things like that. Um, and then some of them which are third parties, um, uh, etc. as well. So, um, you know, big efforts to maximize that, but these are not dumb forms that need rekeying. These are ones that do integrate to back office um, uh, systems. Um, it looks like our effort um, here in terms of uh, this is online transactions um, over the piece since uh, um, uh, early 2016 up until now it seems like we are tailing off but I should say that um, around about this point here our live oh sorry I don't know what I've done there oh no what's happened let me go in here I hope you can see that again um, this one here uh, is when our live Argyle um, uh, which is an arm's length organization of all our leisure and all our libraries was floated off. And so we no longer count them. And so it looks like we've taken a little dive, but actually the trend is still upwards. It's just that we no longer have uh, Liv Argyle with us. The key I wanted to point out here is this is the crucial time here when we moved over to our new omni-channel engagement engine and started our um, uh, big push. Um, uh, uh, to to then and then gradually you can see that we've uh, had a rise. This is when we were disengaging some of our old forms and converting them, and then gradually um, that trend has been upwards. Uh, and of course, in terms of benefit realization, we're very keen on making sure that we capture the channel shift uh, benefits realization and report that up to senior managers again um, to reinforce that thing that this is not just something we, that we should be doing because it's good for customers, but actually it makes business sense um, to do that uh, as well. So um, a lot of effort um, going into um, uh, trying to um, in, engage with our uh, uh, individuals, but we were also very careful to make sure that our communities weren't left behind. Um, and uh, the outreach capability that we now have is very, very powerful. And a lot of it is automated as well so that we can send um, texts and emails out to individuals but also groups of individuals and and to geographical communities as well um, obviously being out here in the west coast we are very prone and um, we had a good hooli blowing last night for example um, and uh, we had um, you know recently for example the uh, the, the, the big snows that hit um, um, particularly impacted on our um, uh, area around about Helensborough and so being able to proactively let people know of issues and things that we won't be doing um, has a big bearing on that avoidable demand that I mentioned to you. So recently, for example, when we did have the big snow that hit um, uh, our areas around about Helensborough, we put a, a, an email and text blast out that um, hit about 4,000 um, households. We were then reporting during the day the um, uh, what do they call them, the, the, the kind of business um, uh, contingency process had kicked in and they were having their silver meetings of um, uh, business continuity for that area and they were very keen to know what the traffic had been on the telephones and what the traffic had been uh, by email etc around about gritting and uh, disruptions etc and it was quiet as the grave on day one uh, because we put out to everybody to say that we won't be able to pick your bins up 
we're doing all our gritting. Here's where you go to try and find out on our service disruptions page all about that kind of stuff. Now, don't get me wrong, people's patience only lasts uh, so long. And uh, on day two and day three, the traffic picked up again because people thought, well, they should have got their act by sorted by now why aren't the lorries picking up my bins etc but it's very important that we can do that and you know particularly for our island communities as well uh, being able to let them know that something isn't coming over on the ferry today whether it's a, um, you know a recycling bin or, or, or lorry or something else is really is really important whether the school's going to be closed um, because you know the head teacher can't make it over from the mainland or whatever um, the other area that we um, do is a lot of um, community engagement in terms of uh, uh, community focused initiatives, um, some of which are our, our own. Um, so, for example, we in Argyll and Butte have a, a big push to try and increase our population and to get um, people to move to the area. So we have a rural resettlement fund and all of that was managed digitally um, through our website, but link into our CRM, which then linked into the caseload management um, side of things. Um, uh, individual um, uh, um, caseloads for applications coming through. Similarly, like uh, all of you, we had to do the community empowerment participation stuff. And so we created and designed that digitally from the outset. And um, participation requests uh, is all handled through our um, CRM, both the contact management element and the, the fulfillment of the participation requests and the management of it um, as well, uh, end to end. The other um, thing that we uh, are very, very keen on is uh, customer insight um, uh, by outreach through consultation of um, uh, everything from the highest level stuff. At the moment, we are um, we have just uh, relaunched our um, corporate plan uh, for the next few years. And you know it's down to uh, um, silly stuff like our strap line. We wanted to ask people. They had uh, our, our wonderful people in our comms team had come up with this, um, you know, various strap lines, and they wanted to get customer input to them and to ask them what alternatives there were. Uh, and so, as you can see from this, there were um, some very decided. Um, uh, unfavorite ones, we're Argyle, you're Argyle, got the big thumbs down, whereas uh, choose Argyle, love Argyle, got the big thumbs up. Uh, and we run our citizens panel, um, but other targeted insights for specific geographical communities, etc. cetera. Um, and I mentioned we've got the big one going on at the moment uh, about how we do um, basically local government um, uh, coming through there. So customer insight to service design to what we're doing in the council um, is really important to us um, as well. Customer satisfaction is the absolute bedrock for improving our services for businesses, for um, communities and for uh, individuals. And so um, one of the things that we did do that saved us a lot of resource, um, but also increased the span of our um, customer satisfaction uh, feedback for continual improvement purposes. Um, we set up a whole raft of automated surveys um, and again you know people can opt in or opt out of these um, uh, as, as they wish from a, a GDPR point of view uh, but um, it allows us to um, you know surveys are made up of three things Things. You have to design the questions, you have to collate the returns, and then you have to do the analysis. And the um, designing and the collation were taking an inordinate amount of time, uh, and yet, you know, we can do that on an automated basis now, um, just little tweaks here and there, and send them out on a, on a scheduled basis, uh, which gives us trend analysis, of course. Um, we're very keen on customer service excellence award uh, standard, sorry, in uh, Argyll and Butte, and this is fantastic evidence for that. But more Importantly, it gives us ongoing, continual um, information and feedback um, uh, that we then use to tweak and to make things better to attract people to use digital more um, going forward. And it's so important to the way that we do business that um, the council has a, a scorecard for customer service uh, that is reported to our uh, committees, etc. And you can see one of the pains upon that is the consultation, the number of consultations that take place and the number of um, uh, customer satisfaction surveys that are done and how we are performing in our overall um, uh, feedback uh, from that. 
So customer satisfaction insight, um, very, very important um, to our continuing improvement. Uh, and people keep talking about transformation, transformation, transformation. Transformation is just a, a way of saying anything digital that helps you achieve your goals better. Uh, and that can be through marginal gains, lots of them. Um, but it can also be through big pan-galactic gargle blasting stuff as, as, as well. Now, I mentioned earlier on that um, uh, we are um, not finished. Um, you know, I'll be doing this till, till the day I retire. Um, but I think this little pie chart kind of summarizes where we've come in the eight years or so since I joined Argyll and Butte um, Council. When I joined, we were very much in this quadrant here, um, digitally being informational uh, and not terribly good at that. We were a one-star socket um, website. Um, we made significant efforts over the past few years to get um, into this quadrant as well as improving that one and get transactional. But now we want to do all of four of these um, uh, quadrants over the next few years. Now, we had a look um, at the Nesta report uh, a couple of years ago on um, you know, digitally enabled um, councils. And we did a stock take of um, uh, Nesta uh, based on it had seven drivers of what met, meant good digital engagement. Um, and we benchmarked ourselves. And what we found was we'd come a long way, but there were 31 key areas in which we could still improve. Um, we put that report to our strategic management team and in the old analogy that you can't swallow an elephant, they chose 11 key areas that they wanted us to um, uh, uh, tackle. However, you know, being um, a frugal council, um, we said we're not going to do anything unless the business case stacks up for these. And we did um, uh, uh, committed some money to allow two project officers to go and research 11 uh, business cases. They've all rolled off the production line um, over the past, since last July, and have gradually, you can see the ticks one by one being um, approved. One of them um, uh, is, um, has proved that there aren't, it doesn't stand up as a business case, but it does from a customer service um, uh, point of view, and that is the nil cost e advertising. We're still very um, hidebound by, um, uh, you know, having to do things um, in print in certain ways for certain statutes. So that didn't stack up. But from a business point of view, um, of broadening how we um, let people know about key um, events, that, that that one's been um, approved as well. And so, our uh, it, in addition to the marginal gains constant stuff that I mentioned earlier on. These are the 11 um, uh, business cases that over the next um, year we will be focusing on in Argyll and Butte as, as part of our digital transformation. Once we've got through them, then we will go back, revisit that Nesta um, report that we did uh, and see if uh, any of the other 20 that are still on there uh, are things that we want to pursue. But you will see that a lot of this is about engagement. A lot of this is about real-time performance broadcasting, um, something that we are not terribly good at, but it can be quite um, effective, um, letting people know in real time, for example, how our contact centre is performing so that they know whether to, to phone us or not. Let them know about um, school buses that are arriving or not arriving on time so that their kids don't have to stand out. Because remember, we're a very rural council at the end of a farm lane for hours on end um, uh, freezing um, because as you know school children don't wear a lot of clothes these days. Um, proactive um, uh, communications, we, 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 once we've got through GDPR we need to rebuild our um, uh, uh, database for that and uh, relaunch our proactive uh, communications. Um, but also the fundamentals that lie underneath it, um, you know, improving our APIs. We've, we've you know, we, we're not very good at controlling our APIs. We tend to buy them ad hoc, one off here, there, and everywhere, and we're wasting a lot of money um, improving our CRM integrations to back office and consolidating a lot more, getting rid of a lot of back office systems that can actually just use the, the, the caseload management system within our CRM, for example. So a lot of work um, to be done um, over the next uh, year in order that we can uh, continue on the trajectory uh, that we are on. Um, uh, and, and maximize that um, uh, customer engagement. And I should say also, um, uh, this is system stuff, and I'm not forgetting the fact that I also uh, said earlier on, we have a big wrap around 
around it as well. And so it's things like making sure that our chief officers, senior officer groups uh, um, have dedicated sessions that relate to digital engagement, um, for example. It's um, uh, um, a whole panoply of um, uh, training. Training um, for our managers, um, reviewing our, our Gallant Butte Manager courses to make sure that the customer service element of it also has a huge big digital engagement element of it. So th there's a lot of subtext that goes on uh, around about that as well. So um, I hope it hasn't been too dull, and there may have been one or two little nuggets that you've picked up there that may have been of interest to you. Uh, and um, I hope that's left a little bit of time for some uh, questions at the end. But um, if there's anything that's in your mind that you want to talk to me about individually, I'm very, very happy if you want to contact me uh, offline about that. Or if you're really brave, you can try our voice automated switchboard and just ask for my name. Thanks very much. Okay, guys. It's been really interesting. Um, just to quickly say that slides and recordings from recording from today's webinar will be on Knowledge Hub, so I will send a follow-up email with the details of that. Um, if you'd like to ask a question, please use the grey box on your screen. Uh, we've actually had a few already. Um, so some about benefits realisation. Um, what are some of the benefits realised from the implementation of the solution? And how are you capturing and measuring the benefits to ensure they're realised? Yep. Oh, there are many, many uh, benefits. Um, of course, we do focus on um, cashable ones uh, these days because that's the, the nature of the beast that we are in, uh, which is why, for example, you know, we've, we have gone a, a long way to um, uh, keeping track on things like um, uh, avoidable contacts um, uh, being um, uh, uh, um, avoided. Uh, but the, there are a number of different ways that we do this. Um, first of all, we have had since 2012 um, uh, a format for um, uh, a, a, attaching a value to um, digital transactions that, that was originally in the early days based upon the socketing values, but we have subsequently moved away from that and we've come up with our own costings um, based upon what we actually commit to our customer service services um, uh, in real terms and we change that uh, every year and so we attach a value but um, the nature of the transaction and the degree to which it avoids work in the back office varies and so we not only attach a value but we attach a weight as well and so some for example uh, online or voice automated payments have got a very high tariff because that is an end-to-end -end complete one and done process that no other human hand ever has to attach again whereas other ones um, so for example some of our uh, um, online forms have a slightly lower value and so they get a, a, a lower weight because they may need still need some physical uh, intervention either to validate them um, or um, to you know uh, to uh, to add information or to chase information up and so um, th that's the way that we do it how we then realize that in terms of um, taking that money out of the system um, uh, we, we initially uh, did it on a, a process whereby um, we gave, so, so say for example, we saved £50,000 from planning and regulatory services by introducing fantastic stuff for them. Um, what we would do is we, we would give them a year to adjust. So in 2012, 13, that's when the, 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 the 50,000 pounds was saved. We wouldn't take it off them in the next year, 13, 14, it would come off them in 14, um, 15, so that they had a year to then adjust, but the savings would then come, come off. What we've now moved away to is we actually, what we found was that was disincentivizing people to do digital um, because they thought the money is just coming off of them. So now we use it as an enabler for wider um, savings. So they come up with um, what we call service choices here that says, right, okay, we think we can re-engineer, restructure, redo this, redo that, and we will save X number of posts and we'll say right okay we will we will use the, uh, the 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 channel shift savings as an enabler towards that and deduct that from the amount that um, uh, uh, is being asked for uh, as it were and so they're incentivized to, uh, to to do that from my own personal point of view though there, there are a whole host of other um, you know things about um, uh, transparency uh, openness um, uh, reputation um, for you know speed of engagement are our, our you know elected members um, and the, and the council casebook thing I set up for, for, for them etc so all of that kind of stuff is, is 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 tangential to that the other thing I mentioned was marginal gains and we have just thousands and thousands of these and we do them every day um, and I'll give you an, an example um, uh, we we've done 
you know, significant BPR with our roads and amenities because they had the highest amount of avoidable um, contacts. And um, it's things like uh, on our assisted bin uplifts um, wasn't linked into our death notifications. Now, by the very nature, you know, you know, it's a harsh fact that uh, many of the people who use our assisted bin service um, uh, have a high mortality rate. And so it's important that um, when that uh, service is no longer required due to the person being disabled, Cease, that we we cease that service as, as timidly as possible and as as um, easily to um, uh, to do as possible. And so now what we've done is we have a, a date of death notification on our CRM because we get them from the Tell Us Once system. And when that date of death is is put into the CRM, if there if the person has a flag for an assisted uplift, it automatically sends a report to the a monthly report. This used to be an annual review that they did, but it's now a monthly report to the um, the supervisor for that relevant area because we've got four areas areas in Argyll and Butte geographically, uh, who then contacts the household to say, is this still, because there may still be a partner who is disabled, etc. in there, but contacts them. Now, that's a marginal gain, but it's, you know, uh, once all of these things are added up, they, they, they add up to significant benefits. Thanks very much. We've got um, someone else saying, great presentation. Thanks, Bob. And then the question is, what work are you doing with the digitally disengaged you ad identified at the beginning? Yeah, well, well, the uh, um, Digital First Working Group that I mentioned uh, earlier on had one of its key strands was um, uh, to, to, to work with uh, addressing our gap for the digitally um, disengaged. And the first thing was about quantifying it because we only had national figures. So we were able to... Um, uh, work with our um, colleagues um, you know for example in welfare rights and benefits etc um, to, to, to get a better handle on that but then also to try and find out how we could help in terms of um, training um, in terms of access to um, uh, devices in terms of doing things in alternative ways and I mentioned earlier that you know we try to offer voice forms um, for things and voice automation as well as um, uh, digital uh, online forms um, as as much as we can. Um, in terms of devices, um, we are actually just rolling out um, pads, um, uh, tablets to all of our uh, customer service points, but with um, uh, a very simplified um, structure on them, just large button structure on them that takes them to key things that, um, that, that you know, it's the old 80-20, that 80% of the stuff is, 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 is important to customers, but you'll need 20% of the buttons, as it were. Um, uh, to do that, but again, using input from our user testing um, and our um, engagement with um, colleagues who are knowledgeable um, about these um, uh, things. So trying to make um, them available, but tying in with our colleagues uh, for, for things like um, making sure that, you know, that when they're doing their outreach, um, physical outreach, that they're offering people the um, ability to understand what our offering is and uh, and how we do it. It's it's just a, 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 a constant thing that we have at the back of our mind whenever we introduce a new service to always try and make some provision um, for those who cannot do things um, digitally and we have quite a, a, an array uh, one of the things uh, other things that we're doing um, this uh, this year is uh, cool browse we've, we've done cool browse in a limited trial um, and uh, re refining our, our capability and our techniques around cool browse um, the other thing was um, uh, mentioned about smart assistant earlier on um, what we found was from that survey that I mentioned earlier was when we asked people what they wanted to use and see on the website uh, a lot of the things they came back with were already there um, and it's obviously because people have difficulty in navigation etc um, and so we've introduced smart assistants so that they can ask simple keyword questions and every single smart assistant answer points to a relevant uh, resource to try and help that but also things like um, we invested in uh, Cluedo um, recently which is uh, uh, an online um, uh, um, uh, capability that tracks how people are using our website uh, so that we can you know use heat maps and um, and uh, uh, things like that to try and refine and improve uh, how people can use our website to make it as simple as possible for everybody to use and then the final thing I would say about the digitally disengaged was a lot of them have now become engaged due to the mobile revolution and which is why um, over four years ago now we went to um, you know mobile adaptive website we decided not to go down the app route and to put our eggs into 
the um, mobile adaptive website and actually uh, our um, uh, feedback um, is that for our mobile customers their satisfaction is actually higher um, than uh, for mobile users than for the the average um, across the piece uh, and I can possibly uh, show you that um, uh, da, 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 or not no I don't, sorry I don't have that one open um, but um, it's 81 percent um, satisfaction versus 77 percent for um, uh, for, for non-mobile users so there's a whole host of different things um, for varying degrees of digital ability from from zero virtually to um, to usable but scared Thank you. I've got another question here. You mentioned upskilling for senior managers. What are you doing to digitally upskill staff at all levels? Yeah. Um, our induction um, is our first line of defence there. Um, obviously, uh, you know, younger people that uh, come into the council these days have, have, have pretty good ICT skills, um, but we have, uh, you know, um, uh, like me, the middle band, who are um, who are probably less digitally capable and who are mind blown by um, the uh, the capabilities of our younger colleagues. Uh, so, um, in our induction program, we have um, a, a lot of, ironically, um, online um, skills um, support um, for them. Uh, but obviously, it's constructed in such a way as to um, uh, um, try and make sure that they have the the key fundamentals of our core corporate systems. Uh, first of all our email system secondly our link Skype um, system uh, because there's no point investing in all of these if people don't know you know how to set tasks how to set reminders and emails for themselves how to join in or set up a video conference um, uh, or do online um, training Skype has been revolutionary in how we have done um, training um, before what we had to have was uh, vast flocks of people roving around the various areas, going out to islands physically to sit down and help assist people and teach people on how to use um, systems. We don't do that anymore. We do it all through um, uh, um, assisted learning through Skype and that has been the absolute boon and the example for that is we have just um, got rid of our Northgate Revs and Bens system and we have moved over to the Civica um, uh, Open Vision Open Revenues um, system and apart from the, the the core of the Revs and Bens people processes who are based here in Campbelltown every other benefits processor in every one of my customer service point people who, who take, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, try to resolve as many of those at first point of contact. We're all trained using um, uh, Link and Skype uh, and, and structured um, online modules um, to do that. Um, in terms of, uh, that's just technical capability though. The other thing we have to do is make sure our managers are absolutely, completely understanding of how um, uh, digital uh, is fundamental to the efficiency of their um, uh, services, good customer service and good customer engagement and there's, there's a whole raft of things we've done on a cultural point of view. I know the SLGDO is um, is uh, doing a, a, a digital capability scoring um, exercise. I had a look at that myself. Self-score I think we're probably about, about 3.8 I would say um, on that in terms of where we are culturally. Out of five, I should say. <laughs> Thanks very much, Bob. Um, we've got another question here, and that's what challenges were there in moving from the Lagan CRM to the Oracle? How long did the CRM change process take? We did it in um, six months flat. Um, we, we, we procured um, Oracle. It was uh, we got access to the cloud-based resource in the October. Um, there was some teething problems setting it up and everything, so we didn't really get into it until about the first of November, uh, and then we went hell for leather. Uh, November, December, January, February and March and we went um, live uh, because we didn't want to pay for Oracle for another year um, at the end of March and we moved 142 separate processes. Here in Argyll and Butte um, our contact centre answers anything about everything. It's not just about you know it dealing with amenities or anything. it deals with the full range of, um, of everything basically um, and so we had to rebuild um, all of those. We did it in two stages basically. We built it in a like for like 
to start off with. And then we spent the next phase two um, bringing all the um, new capabilities of Oracle um, to bear, um, doing all the little marginal gains that I mentioned earlier on. Uh, um, Oracle is really, really um, feature rich in terms of being able to do business rules, etc. We totally blasted all of our lagging online um, forms, replaced them 100% with uh, Oracle forms, and have subsequently added many, many to that, including the integration to the, the, the payment system. Obviously, we did a huge big data cleanse um, using the um, uh, um, the Scottish um, the Improvement Services um, data cleansing capability, which was invaluable um, because it also meant for the first time ever we could align our data with our contact data with the contacts in our revs and bend system um, so that we had that you know some single golden uh, record um, and um, of course we had to do uh, uploads to CAG etc we had to rebuild our integrations to our back office systems um, so it was a, a heck of a lot of work um, but in, in an intense period of time but um, uh, we had some assistance um, from a third party consultants who had two guys that helped us for those five months off and on and um, uh, no uh, it wasn't nearly as painful as uh, we thought it could be uh, and um, I think on a, a scale of one to ten uh, one being how badly catastrophically it could have went um, and ten being the divine uh, divinity um, I would say we probably did about 7.5 um, and the fact I'm still here talking to you having project managed it is a is a testament to I think to um, uh, how well it was received by the uh, senior managers so it is totally doable Thanks, Bob. Um, next question is, how far are you in implementing your virtual contact centre? Uh, the virtual contact centre has been up and running for a number of years. We are 100% there. Um, we uh, have nine customer service points. Um, linked into the core customer service center here in Campbelltown and um, uh, they are attached to the same Oracle system, they are attached to the same net call system. We can, um, if we have uh, high traffic or if we have um, uh, significant um, uh, outages, which we very rarely have. Um, we actually had a denial of service attack outage for about three hours, um, which is the first significant outage we'd had since we went live um, uh, last week. Um, we can then bring in those um, uh, agents um, from across the uh, uh, spectrum uh, to help us out. Um, and uh, if I can um, just get rid of this and show my desktop I will just load up um, oh no I can't because of obviously I'm on the seminar sorry I was going to show you the um, dashboard of the uh, of the virtual contact center so you could see all of the um, uh, the different workflows coming in the contacts the emails the, the web chats the Facebook etc flowing in but that is that is entirely 100% set up and that was like I say fundamental to our efficiency gain um, I can now say with my hand on my heart that that no matter if I have a person in Tyree or if I have a person in Mull or if I have a person in Helensborough, they are working diligently on all of our contacts that um, that are coming in and they're switching between them so that once we get the bulk of the, the peak of calls out the way in the morning, they do go automatically onto the emails. We've got people vectored to do the the, the real-time on-demand stuff like the web chats, the less on-time stuff like the um, Facebook and the um, smart assistants etc um, coming in so it's all there it's all there at the moment thank you very much we've got another question here how do you encourage staff out with customer services to take the time to update the CRM yeah um, there's a number of different levers at different levels we have service level agreements with all of our services um, uh, on what we provide them and what they provide us. We have quarterly meetings with them um, to uh, review both our performance, but also their performance in terms of what they um, give us. Below that, there are operational working groups um, between us and our key um, people who are um, uh, social work, I would say, is probably the highest traffic, followed by revs and bends, um, followed by um, probably um, roads and amenities, followed by planning and regulatory. They're the kind of four biggest hitters. And so we have operational working groups 
for yeah, each of those um, at a lower level. But also, um, we have a customer service board, which uh, which which um, uh, monitors the overall performance of customer services by the services and the customer service. That has a six weekly reports into the um, strategic management team, so that.